From mysteries to miracles, here's everything you need to know about AI image generators. There are countless generators, but they all use very similar core concepts. So for the sake of simplicity of the video, let's consider DALI 2 from OpenAI as an example. And we shall talk about stable diffusion a little bit later because there are some interesting things about it. So this is the overall procedure for generation of images in DALI 2. We shall learn them one by one. The first step is to understand the user's prompt, which is nothing but the text input from the user and find its connection with the visual representations of the objects defined in that prompt. To do this, DALI makes use of CLIP, an AI model trained with nearly 400 million text image paths extracted from the internet, which might include our photos. And this is how the CLIP model is trained. Images along with captions matching parts of the prompt are taken from the source dataset and they are converted into mathematical representations called embeddings using the image and text encoders within the clip. Then the model is trained to calculate the similarities and dissimilarities of matching and non-matching pairs. This similarity is actually called cosine similarity, which has something to do with vector maths. But I don't want to sound like a nerdy math professor, so let's not go too deep into it. In this way, the visual representations of objects are learned by clip. By the way, click that subscribe button if you want to learn tech stuff like this. That would help me a lot. The encoders inside clip are used to generate text and image embeddings from the user prompt. However, the image embeddings generated in this stage is not yet finalized. It is moved on to the next stage called prior. Jali uses another model called diffusion model as the prior, which is nothing but a step-by-step -step process of adding gradual noise to the image until it becomes unrecognizable from the original one like this. And then it tries to recreate the original image back from that full noise. This way, it learns the individual details of the image embeddings and then it gets the ability to generate images from the text prompt. The reason to use prior is because based on an experiment from the authors of DALI, using prior resulted in better images and removing it would remove the ability to generate variations of images and it would just repeat the image results repeatedly for a given prompt. So this is the reason why DALI can produce up to like four images for a single prompt and every time the results are unique. Now back to the architecture, we have every encoded data required in hand and now it's time to decode the data and generate the final images. For the decoding part, DALI uses yet another AI model created by OpenAI called Glide, which in itself is a text-to-image generator. It is similar to the second part of the diffusion model, where it creates an image from noise. But in addition, instead of creating the original image, Glide takes into account the user prompt and uses it to generate what the user described in the prompt. But the version of Glide used by DALI is modified a little bit. During the step-by-step -step image generation process, it makes use of the user prompt as well as the clip text and image embeddings from the encoding process to get the most out of them and create awesome, perfectly matching images. And it performs way better in terms of accuracy and results when compared to the original version of Glide. The generated images are originally 64 by 64 in resolution and they are upscaled twice to reach 1024 resolution. And here is a little summary of the process. The text and image embeddings are created by the clip model. However, the final image embeddings are created by the diffusion prior to let the model know how to create the images from scratch based on the user prompt. And in the decoding part, a modified version of Glide is used, which makes use of the user prompt as well as the clip embeddings to decode them and create the final images. And the final images are upscaled twice to reach 1084 resolution. Even though the models used inside like Clip and Glide are completely open source, DALI 2 is still closed source because it seems like they've put in a lot of restrictions to prevent creation of abusive and harmful content, which if made open source will make those restrictions absurd. Also, Microsoft is investing billions in OpenAI and we can already see them implementing the features of ChatGPT and DALI across their products like Bing and Edge, which I think will give them a slight edge over Google, pun intended. The future of DALI seems completely bright as this light. Did you expect that rhyming? Never mind. But on the other side, Stability AI, the company who created Stable Diffusion, an open source alternative to DALI, is going a bit unstable nowadays because them along with other companies like Midjourney and DeviantArt are getting sued by a copyright infringement lawsuit filed by three artists for using their work without consent to create art. And Stability AI is getting a special lawsuit treatment from Getty Images for using their images. You can literally see the watermark in those generations. By the way, on the positive side, here are some of my crazy AI creations. And I was able to take a photo in front of the Eiffel Tower while being at home. So this AI thing is interesting and terrifying at the same time. Thank you so much for watching. Share this video to spread the knowledge and see you next time.